Hi, I'm Michael Beardsley, and welcome to another episode of An Actor Reacts. In these videos, I watch an episode of a television show, and I react to the scenes that involve acting, or filmmaking, or whatever other crap I want to talk about. Today, we are actually doing two episodes of Entourage. Yeah. Back by popular demand, we will be starting with episode three, Talk Show. As always, spoilers ahead, so let's get started. Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy Kimmel! Hey, how you doing? Hey, you, know, you know Vincent Chase, right? Yeah, hey, how are you? There you go. Hey. What's happening? Yeah, big fan. Jimmy Kimmel Live had been on for only about a year when this was shot. We should get you on the show. Oh, yeah. We'd love to do it anytime. Tomorrow we'd love to have you, actually, if you could. Tomorrow? Yes, we do. You're kind of putting come me on, on the Come on, come on. Talk shows do not wait until the night before they film to book their guests. Also, the host wouldn't be the one to do the booking. That being said, maybe somebody canceled, so this is a last minute thing and he's scrambling to find somebody and he sees him and gets the idea. So I'll give that a pass. You got a movie yeah, coming up Friday. I right, can't hurt. See you tomorrow. Do there you go, he's in. All right. All right. All right. You done? Uh, absolutely. All right. Very good. A publicist would actually be the one that would want to deal with bookings on talk shows. The agent would definitely be involved as well. But the publicist would be like the the point man. Hey, you still doing that thing with Wes? Uh, yeah, we're gonna start shooting in June. Hey, did you get anyone to play the part of the partner? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, my brother's gonna do it. This is Luke Wilson. He was known for movies like The Royal Tannenbaums, Legally Blonde, Charlie's Angels, Old School. The Wes they are talking of is Wes Anderson, who would have just done The Royal Tannenbaums at the time and is also known for Rushmore and The Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu. And of course, Luke's brother is Owen Wilson, who at the time was best known for Meet the Parents, The Royal Tannenbaums, Shanghai Noon, and Zoolander. The movie they're talking about is probably The Life Aquatic, as that was a Wes Anderson movie that came out later that year. However, it didn't start shooting in June, finished in November. The role of the partner did not go to Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson was in the movie, he played the son. It actually went to Seymour Castle, and Luke Wilson is not in the movie at all. So it's just a movie they made up, which is fine. If he falls out, you think of me, right? Always, always thinking of you, Johnny Drama. Actors generally don't have a lot to do with casting. I mean, sure, they could make a recommendation, but someone like Wes Anderson, you know, he's going to make his own decisions. Vince, you going to prepare anything for the show? No, they'll take all the fun out of just winging it. Well, you guys are going to ask you a lot of questions. It's Jimmy Kimmel. Not 60 minutes, bro. All right, you'll see. You should have some stories ready. So you want to talk about Kimmel? It's a talk show. They ask you questions. You answer them. Hey, what's up? No, well, not much. How you feeling? Pretty good. Those could be really boring answers if there's no pre-interview. What, you could pick up the phone and call me? It happened last night. Well, you want to do Kimmel? You come to me. I'm your publicist. That's what I'm here for, and that's what I do, OK? OK, yes, here we go. See? A publicist's job is to deal with talk show appearances and all that. Yeah, look, I'm serious, all right? You don't want to piss off Letterman. You don't want to piss off Leno. That's a thing, actually. Uh, sometimes, if you were on Leno, Letterman wouldn't want you because he would be upset that you went on the other show first and vice versa. With a small-time actor like Vince, I don't think that would really be a problem because his movie was coming out this week and he wasn't booked on any show, so Jimmy Kimmel Live is a good choice for him. Those guys are vindictive pricks. Have you ever even seen the show? I was actually at the taping of one episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live, but it wasn't in the studio. It was out on Hollywood Boulevard outside his studio, and it was a live concert of Audio Slave. And here is Audio Slave! Do you see me? Yeah, I don't either. Sean, you should get me on a talk show. I'd kill. Hey, maybe I'll get you on Springer. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Maybe I'll get you on Montel with uh, Don Swayze, Joey Travolta, and the other retarded star siblings. <laughs> Joey Travolta and Don Swayze are actually unfamous brothers. I would throw Frank Stallone in there, too. Kimmel's girl just called. They're calling back in an hour to do the pre-interview. Oh, no, you're going to have to do that, E. Pre-interviews are a thing. They prevent boring interviews. Most shows require them. I've only done one talk show, and it was the John Kerwin show. Very small, low-rent talk show. But they had a pre-interview. Okay, so first up is uh, Michael Beardsley. How about a hand for Michael? Hey, Michael, how you doing? Hey, I was on Arsenio. It never aired because he got canceled, but I was good. 
That is a lie. There are no unaired episodes of Arsenio Hall. He knew his show was ending, and they had this big farewell last episode. I'd like to thank America. I'd like to thank all the talent in Hollywood that's made this what it is. I want to thank my staff and crew, and mostly I want to thank God. This has been the greatest five and a half years any man could ever dream of. God bless. I won't see you in 23 hours, but I will see you again. I watch your show all the time. My show? Never miss it. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, tell them about the stoned out craft service girl who blew me after lunch. Quite simply, the craft service department is responsible for maintaining the snack table. This guy here is warming up the crowd. Basically, he just comes out, tells a few jokes, tells the audience who's on the show, keeps them entertained while they wait. They really do this at talk shows. That sign is actually a sign that he, he had there. From the movie, The Big Bounce, Sarah Foster! Sarah Foster is a real actress. She was in The Big Bounce which would have come out about six months before this was shot. So you'll notice he doesn't say it's coming out. She's not really known for much other than the big bounce. She's also known for Debs. Her career has not progressed much since. I don't understand why she's the top guest if Vince is supposedly this hot new actor. I think he would be the first guest on the show. <laughs> Alright, look, you guys go to the green room. I'm gonna take Vince to make up. Jimmy Kimmel is actually known to have kind of a party style green room, which almost makes it not a green room because a green room is actually where the actors would have a moment before they come out. So it's kind of a green room, but more of a publicity stunt. You're at stock like a trout pond. Ready in five. We need ten. Like most talk shows, this is recorded live to tape, which means it's in front of a live audience but it's recorded and aired later that night. So if she needed 10 minutes you instead too. of five because she's having sex Come in her in. dressing room, Close it would be annoying because everyone would have to wait for her. We just but had sex about five minutes ago. When I did the John Kerwin show, it actually took them a long time to get through the monologue. They would do retakes. So the audience had to sit through all that. And as a guest, I was having a little bit to drink before I went on and well, I was a little more buzzed than I would have liked when he interviewed me. You have an interesting look. That's what they tell I heard, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sarah Silverman. Hey. Ari Gold. Oh. Hi. Sarah Silverman, mostly known as a comedian, but has also done movies like There's Something About Mary, School of Rock, Evolution, Heartbreakers. I'm not trying to fuck you, Sarah. I'm trying to sign you. Agents do try to steal clients from other agents, but Ari is very aggressive about it. <laughs> See, there we have it, live to tape, so they go home and they wash themselves, have a watch party. And with that, we are going to move on to the next episode, episode four, which is date night. Yeah. It's game day, baby. What? We're opening today. We got hot little teens right now walking into theaters on the East Coast to support our boy. Why aren't you awake? What time is it? Listen, I'm going to call you with the midday numbers. Get ready. Opening box office numbers are very important to studios and to a lesser degree to agents and the actors. Fan mail. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Fan mail is a thing. Morning, guys. Fan mail. When I was young, I got an autographed picture of Harrison Ford. Oh, picture request. Nice enough to send the money for the stamp. Relax, I'll send the picture. I did not send postage. Look at that, huh? Not bad. I've never got any real fan mail, just fan email. And I've never got any nudes. We should hit Encino first. It's playing at the gallery at 6.15. Nice try, Turtle, but nope. The Galleria is in Sherman Oaks, not Encino. I told you, I don't want to see the movie. I can't watch myself again. I love watching myself. Too bad the audience doesn't. A lot of actors I know do hate watching themselves myself included. Usually after I watch it, if it's not terrible, I'm very self-critical, then I can watch it again. You have a date? Yeah. Emily asked me to go to dinner. She asked you? Yeah, it's no big deal. You're getting asked that like a little bitch. I'd say it's a very big deal. A woman that knows what she wants and asks a guy out is freaking hot.
You know, I haven't been on a real date since high school. Yeah, it's because nobody dates in L.A., Vance. It's a waste of time. Yeah, and money. People do date in L.A., though I cannot confirm that it is not a waste of time and money, as I am single. L.A. lives between 2 and 5 a.m. You take a lap through the talent pool, catch and release. After 2 o'clock, all you find is losers trying to pick up women outside of clubs. I know because I shot a film once and we shot at 2 a.m. when the club was letting out and it was sad. It's all the people that haven't been able to hook up with anyone before that time. Online's even better. You get the small talk out of the way so when they show up, they're good to go. Name one girl you ever pulled off the internet. There's all sorts of confidentiality agreements with these sites. I have not been lucky with online dating either. I've tried a few of them. I have had a few bad dates. There's a web series. You can check it out. Link in description. Big Boy's Neighborhood. Big Boy is a real radio host in Los Angeles. This is his studio. These are his people. I've never listened to him, but I've seen the billboards. In the years since this episode, Big Boy lost a lot of weight. This is what he looks like now. When it comes to like an opening weekend for you, Vincent, homie, do you have those rituals that everybody else go through, like you gotta pack dirt on your face or sacrifice a goldfish or anything like that, Vincent? Right. Nah, I'm not superstitious. At all? No. That's more with sports people than actors. Now I heard, what what heard? heard. that Mel Gibson carried a cross up to Mesco Cane before Passion opened. Yeah, man. Oh, it must have worked, yeah, huh? Yeah, it really worked. It yeah. sure did work for Vince would have been a gorgeous Jesus. I got paid $500 to not play Jesus. Seriously, here's the deal. Don't panic. Matinees were less than stellar. This is a date movie. This Pixar squirrel is killing us. Animated squirrel sounds like Ice Age, but it's not because that came out two years before this, and also that wasn't Pixar. So it's just a movie they made up, which is fine. Cinerama Dome is a real thing. It actually closed recently, but it's going to reopen. You cats going to see head on? Nah, man, we're going to see that talking squirrel thing. I have been there one time. I saw Scarface in 2003-ish, about a year before they shot this. What are these two guys doing? They're way standing way in the street. This is not realistic. They're probably there for safety reasons on the production, but would not have to be there in case a random limousine wanted to drop somebody off. Here's another thing. Why are they lined up in the street? There is a perfectly good sidewalk right there. Paparazzi at the door, that is plausible. This looks like some independent guy trying to get a scoop. Where are you? Oh, did you get the numbers? This here is the actual box office for the Cinerama Dome. I'm not sure if they're trying to make it look like two different places or what, but there are also a lot of mistakes in this scene. Look at the marquee in the background. The movies listed are Godsend, Man on Fire, Shaolin Soccer, Envy, Kill Bill Volume 2, Clifford's Really Big Movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, 13 Going on 30, Faster, Connie and Carla, and Zadatochi for The Fugitive. There's only one screen that you can't see what is playing on, so you could argue that, okay, maybe Head On is playing there. What about the animated squirrel movie then? And FYI, the movie that was actually playing on the screen you can't see was Mean Girls. Another strange thing. The showtimes listed start around noon. Why is this? They probably shot this late at night and they turned on those times because it looked better in the background and they didn't think anyone was going to go and read it. But I did. I gotta go do this. You know. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? This is our night. Hey, baby, I love you. Don't wait up. Okay? Ari, uh, could I have the car keys, please? Dude, come on! There's a cab stand at fucking Yucca! This joke is actually even funnier if you know that Yucca is really not that close to the Cynodome. <laughs> We've got the number one movie in the country. Who beat the squirrel? Number one live action film in the country, $18.6 million. This is very, very true. Production companies move the goalposts all the time. Notice he said the top grossing live action movie, meaning they did not beat the animated squirrel. Back in the day, it was really easy for production companies to spin a failure into a success. Most people got their entertainment fine. news from Access Hollywood, Entertainment Tonight, Extra, or a magazine like Entertainment Weekly. Nowadays, we have YouTube. Companies still try to change the narrative.
but it's not that effective when people on YouTube can point out that you're spinning things. But the numbers he said are actually really good. Of all the movies I have mentioned in this video, the only one that did numbers that good or better than that is The Passion of the Christ that did considerably better. Ice Age came close with 13.5 million. Is that Jason Bateman? What? Who's the exhibitionist? She's out there cutting it up with Team Wolf. Like Jay Fox? <laughs> nah, nah, the guy from the sequel. Jason Bateman was in Teen Wolf 2. And that brings us to the end of the second episode. One thing I really like about this show is that they feature actual places in Los Angeles. I already mentioned the Cinerama Dome. The club they went to at the end was Prey, which was a real place, though it has since closed and reopened as Nightingale. And they also went to Lucky Strike, which is a bowling alley that I've actually been to. Anyway, let's do a recap. On the good side, pre-interviews do exist. Publicists are the ones in charge of booking actors on talk shows. Jimmy Kimmel's green room was a bit of a hangout. Opening night numbers are important. On the bad side, that was a complete and utter failure on the theater marquee. Jimmy Kimmel's green room is a little overdone. There are no unaired Arsenio Hall episodes. And for the ugly, Michael Beardsley, kind of like a demonic Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, I play lots of geeks and cult members. And so that brings us to the end of the episode. So do all those wonderful things that you always have to do. Subscribe to my channel. Watch my other videos. Give me some thumbs ups. Subscribe to my Patreon. Rob. Leave me many, many comments. Good ones. And until next time.